Welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to talk about a very severe issue that we are all facing and that it, con it concerns us all. The issue of bad statistics and bad numbers with a key example. You might think that this issue concerns only uneducated people, which will be already a very severe issue, but actually it's not the case. Yesterday I was listening to a discussion on YouTube between an MIT professor in AI and um, a top professor from Stanford University in medicine. <laughs> and at some point, it, one of the two said a sentence that I had to do this video. I had to share more and discuss about those issues with you using this very, very terrible example. Let's see that together. So this video has been seen about half a million times in two weeks, which makes it even worse. <laughs> and they were discussing the two professors that I, I don't want to, to call by their name because I don't want to public shame or anything. I mean, I, that's not the point here. Here it's just to, to educate ourselves and, and, and grow together. And so at some point they, they were discussing during the whole podcast about how lockdowns are bad basically and it should be done differently and so on and so forth. Many things that I think about this discussion but let's focus just on this sentence that made me think that I should do this video. Basically at some point the Stanford professor in, in, in medicine who has published in top journals in the world, really the best journal in the world, said the lockdown didn't stop the disease spreading anyway, using this <laughs> as an argument that it's useless so it's not working. Well, here there is something very problematic with this argument. Is that the person, the two person actually, fail to understand that they miss the counterfactual. What will be the world without lockdowns to be able to assess the difference lockdown without lockdowns? And we worked for two years uh, with my team working exactly to compute this counterfactual. And I, I, I hope this paper will be soon published. I will be able to, to share in more extensively the results of this research and prove with data and a statistical model how that this is wrong. But for the moment, just let's think in broader term about this issue. So a counterfactual, which is necessary to, to compute the, the difference between two situations, the effect of something will be, for example, let me take three very simple examples to illustrate that and how important it is. Let's say you want to assess the effect of a drug on your headache. So basically you take uh, two, a group of people, you randomly assign some to a placebo and some to the dr new drug, and then you compare the effect of, uh, on the headache. Basically the two groups are very comparable. They are on average, have the same characteristics, and, and basically they don't really differ much. So then you can really see if there is a difference between the one without the drug, the placebo, and the one with the drugs with respect to the headache, you can really say that there is an effect, a causal effect, something is happening. But if you just give a drug to a group of people and you observe if they got better on, or, or worse, it's very hard to say what's the effect. Let me take another example. Let's say you look at the production of renewable energy. You look at the trend over the years worldwide and you look at uh, greenhouse gas emission at the same time uh, over the years. There is a very clear positive correlation between the two. Does that mean that renewable energy production is useless or even it's worse because we see that it's, keep, it's still growing? Well, definitely not. There is no doubt about that. The thing is, if you think about, we should compute the counterfactual. What would be the world like without renewable energy? And even if it's still growing today, the greenhouse gas emission, maybe it will go grow faster in this counterfactual, this alternative world without the policy implementation. So let me give you a very similar and simple example. My brother, as you might know from other video, is was doing a peace negotiation in the world. So he was going deep in conflict zone to discuss uh, peace treaties with armed groups and governments. 
At some point in his career, someone was assessing basically his job and said, well, while you were, this, while you were working in Syria, in this region, the, the violence kept growing. The point of the person was that basically as he was working for peacekeeping uh, in a region and the, the violence kept growing, it was potentially <laughs> meaning that he was failing at, at his job. But what again the person completely failed to understand was that what's the counterfactual? What would be the, the situation if he was not there? Maybe the, the violence kept growing, but maybe it would grow even faster if, it, if he was, wasn't there. So it's I'm not saying that, that she was wrong or she was right. I'm just saying, well, it's impossible to say with little information like that. You really need to do a way to, to see the counterfactual, to assess the effect of a policy of any action. So in short, please don't think that because people have big titles, <laughs> published in top journals, from big universities, that what they say is the truth. They still might fail to understand or even if they do understand, try to manipulate people with bad statistics or I'm not saying it's, it's voluntarily the case in this situation, but, but the thing is it's too big. I mean, come on. So that's why this first ed statistics and really spreading knowledge of statistics is absolutely key. And we have to all to be more educated on, on, on this to, to avoid manipulation and misunderstanding. So next time you hear something about is there an effect or not, really think, can we compare with the counterfactual, with the alternative world without that? Because else it's impossible to know if it will have kept growing, it will have slowed down, it will have been the same over time. So if you want to discuss the rest of the, the discussion of the podcast, if you manage to find it, well, just comment below if you want to, to comment also and discuss what's in this video. Again, I will be really glad to discuss all of this with you in the comments below. As always, thanks for being here with me and good luck in this world with bad statistics.